Kopanumatwa, Mohale Mashiho, Marilo, Malebo Sepodi, and Renelwe Malaji. What do these women all have in common? Well, they're all acclaimed authors whose works have taken the South African literature landscape by storm and will all headline the ninth edition of the Josie Book Fair. The fair takes place from the 31st of August to the 3rd of September and it's at Mary Fitzgerald Square in Newtown and it's under the theme Women and Literature. Maria Fandriel is the director of the uh, Josie Book Fair. She joins us now to tell us more about this year's event. Welcome, Maria. Morning, Paul. Thank you for inviting us. This is a fabulous event that is well attended, well loved by many people here in Johannesburg. Uh, tell us more about this event and how it's sort of grown over the years. It's become, um, it's much more than books. So it's not just a book fair. It also now incorporates all different art forms, right? I think what is distinctive about it is become a people's book fair. It's become a people's fair. It's a festival. And 60%, between 60 and 70% of events are hosted by the public. So you'll have art, you'll have literature, you'll have exhibitions, you'll have theater, poetry, open mic. But I think also you have our children who will be showcasing their work, the poetry they've written over the year. You also have 10 of our school authors who have won the short story competition. So their stories will be read this year as well. So they'll make their debut and they will be launching their book as well at the book fair. And then you've got lots of different networks as well. Worker networks, community networks, feminist networks, um, people who are wanting to self-publish as well will be launching their books. So there's a variety of events, roundtable discussions, you know, the more topical ones on white monopoly capitalism, on feminism, um, you know, you name it. We've got, we've got a, a lovely um, discussion on black girls, fat girls. What is the media, you know, how, how do medias um, represent black women and how do black women internalize that? So a lot of that is really from the public and the book fair would not be possible if it wasn't for the goodwill of the people of Gauteng and, and South Africa. And of course this year the city's come to the party and the city has um, been collaborating with us this year. So we're using Mary Fitzgerald Square. And we think with, you know, it's a very insightful decision on the part of the city as well, because in this way we can build a movement of readers and writers and we can end social inequality in this way. You know, when people come together and it's a little bit of normality and building tolerance and citizenship, etc. So it's really a fun festival, you know, for everybody, for the family, for the household. Now a lot has been said about sort of the culture of reading in South Africa. And do you find that as uh, the director of the Josie Book Fair that you had to start tapping into people's other passion points like art, um, like children, um, like music, like these open mic sessions in order to uh, create a bigger and better book fair to attract them to literature because people tend to think that people aren't really that keen on reading. You know, literature is also about life, right? And I mean, it's about everything that affects all our lives. We come through an education system that sometimes alienates us and puts us off reading, right? We don't grow up with books. We don't have many libraries, etc. So it is our task to say, how do we make reading interesting as well? How do we get people to read architecture or to read the city you know what I mean how do we get them to read different kinds of things you know what I mean not just the book but I think as you say it's about theater it's about how do you write a song you like the music write the song now so play with the words etc and what we find works really well for all ages not just children is playing with words playing with language playing with indigenous languages etc telling one story in many different languages and it's amazing because it also breaks down the stereotypes and the divisions in the country that we live in as well you know yeah. so that people begin to look at this as just it's another human activity that binds us together and uh, tell us about the theme women in literature do you think just expand on that for us do you think um, the amount of female writers that are emerging in this country is is making a big enough impact uh, in the world of literature Look, I think it's happening and I think, you know, we're cultivating young girls, we're writing our schools, our youth, etc. I think we've got a fascinating lineup as well of, of women of different ages as well. So it's also about looking at how we're depicting women in literature. We're also looking, delving into the history 
of women in literature because I think one of the exhibitions on display which I think you'd be interested in, in is a pioneer woman in the media. So we're looking at Noni Jabavu, Ellen Kutswayo, you know the women pioneers who've become invisible and have been buried. We're trying to unearth them as well as part of looking at our history and saying this is not the first time, you know what I mean, that women are in in, in literature, you know what I mean, can we reclaim that history, can we revisit that, can we look at that, what are the lessons for us now in, you know, the after 20 years of democracy, how are we looking at women, are we actually reflecting the issues, the realities, etc. So we're linking literature as well to, for example, Stats SA. They're coming to do an exhibition as well to look at what is the reality of black women in South Africa and how does the literature reflect this so that, you know what I mean, it's multidimensional and we're looking at literature from from different aspects. Right. Um, so now we know a little bit about um, the uh, local authors lineup and what we can expect. It's, as you just said, it's not just about books, but internationally, are there other authors and writers or speakers that have been invited that we could maybe look forward to? Well, we have, uh, we've got Shalja Patel, who's the guest of the book fair. She's from Kenya. She's internationally acclaimed as a poet. She's also a performer as well. So, I mean, lots of energy. She's an activist, so there's a lot of critique of society, whether it's climate change or the elections in Kenya, she will talk about that. We also have Lindsay Collin, who is a Mauritian author, but originally South African. Um, wonderful, wonderful writer. She's got about 10 books. She's won the Commonwealth Prize for Literature twice. She will be there. We have an author from the US called Cray Francis, who saw, you know, heard about the book fair on social media, etc., and says, you know, black, uh, black, um, a black woman from the U.S. who has now coming to do a lot of workshops, etc. And she's bringing herself because she likes the ideas that we're trying to promote in the book fair as well. Right. So we've been very, you know, very, very fortunate. Busy and fortunate. And it's lovely. going to be absolutely lovely. Thank you so much Thank for your you time very this much. morning. Yeah, that is uh, Maria Fangio, who is the director of the Josie Book Fair, which takes place from the 31st of August 2017 to the 3rd of September at Mary Fitzgerald Square in Newtown, Johannesburg. This year's theme as women and literature, and will be headlined by, amongst others, Kopano uh, Matwa, the likes of, uh, uh, you know, she wrote the books of, uh, the likes of Spilt Milk and Coconuts, which I read back in school. Her latest book is uh, titled Period Pains, and internationally acclaimed Kenyan poet, playwright, theatre uh, art, theater artist, Shajela Patel, if I am saying that correctly.